Grade 6 math, number 4.3a, multiply fractions, cancel out to solve. Okay, I'm going to show you some pretty cool stuff with multiplying with fractions here. When we multiply a fraction by a fraction, what we're doing is multiplying the numerator by the numerator and the denominator by the denominator and just coming straight across. And when we have a whole number, if we put the whole number over a 1, it turns it into a fraction. Emma has one-third of her dragon costume sewn, so she has two-thirds left until she's finished. If she does half of that today and the other half tomorrow, how much of the costume will she sew today? So here's a drawing that's going to help you know the answer ahead of time. She's sewn one-third of her dragon costume already, so this is the part that's finished. She still has two-thirds left to go. If she does half today and half tomorrow, how much will she sew today? Well, you can see that she'll have done a third yesterday, a third today, and a third tomorrow. Because the two-thirds that are left, if she does half of it, it's one-third. See? Two-thirds is left, and that's today is one-third, and tomorrow is the other third. See? Well, we actually can do two-thirds times a half. What we're doing is we're multiplying the 2 times the 1 numerator and the 3 times the 2 denominator. 2 times 1 is 2 and 3 times 2 is 6. We get 2 6. Now these can both be divided by 2 to reduce it to lowest terms and it'll come out to be 1 third. Well the other way we can do it is we can cancel out by cross dividing common factors. If we have 2 thirds times 1 half we look at the crossways, not straight across, these are cross canceling out, okay? I want you to think of canceling out as canceling it out with an X, okay? Because that's how we do it. We do it crossways. 2 can go into 2 one time, so we put a 1 here and a 1 there. The 1 and the 3 are as small as they can get, they can't be divided anymore, so now we have 1 times 1 over 3 times 1, which is a third. Now, by canceling out and doing it this way, we've eliminated this step of having to reduce to lowest terms. The answer comes out in its lowest terms. See? We're actually simplifying before we multiply. 2 divided by 2 is equal to 1 for the numerator, and it cross, and it's cross denominator. See? So they kind of cancel each other out. See? We are reducing it to lowest terms before we even multiply. When we cancel out by cross-dividing common factors, it's important to remember to use the largest factors we can. Just like simplifying the product, we'll create extra work for ourselves if we use factors that are too small. If we have 5 sixteenths times 4 fifteenths, and we cancel the 5 out with the 15, because 5 goes into 15 three times, 1 5 goes into 15 three times. That becomes a 1 and that becomes a 3. Now we've got a 4 and a 16 that can be canceled out. If we choose 2 and 8 as cross products, what's going to happen is we're going to end up with 1 times 2 over 8 times 3, which equals 2 24ths. That still needs to be simplified down to 1 12. You know why? because we chose too small of a number. We didn't choose the biggest common factor that we could have. We should have chose 4. If we had used a 4 to cancel out the 4 and the 16, the 4 would have become a 1 and the 16 would have become a 4. Then we would have had 1 times 1 over 4 times 3. We would have had 1 12, which is the final answer here, and we wouldn't have created that extra step here, see? No different than if you're simplifying at the end of the problem, when you're cross-canceling out like this, you can create extra work if you don't choose a large, large enough number. So because we used the 4 this time to cancel out instead of the 2, like we did up here, we don't have to simplify the product in an extra step like we did here, see? So watch. This is the old way versus the cross-canceling out way. 
If we have 3 times 2 ninths, remember I said if the numerator is over 1, that's the whole number. So we can turn a 3 into a fraction by just putting it over 1, see? So 3 times 2 ninths equals 3 over 1 times 2 ninths. The 3 goes into the 9 3 times. 1 3 goes in 3 times, see? And the 1 and the 2 are as small as they can get, so now we have 1 times 2 over 1 times 3 that gives us 2 thirds. If we do it this way, 3 over 1 times 2 ninths, we get 3 times 2 is 6 over 1 times 9 is 9, and now we need to simplify it to its lowest terms and divide both sides by 3, and then we get the 2 thirds. So you can see I tried to line them up the same, and this creates more writing and more work. If you can cancel out, you'll have it already reduced to its lowest terms when you're finished multiplying the fraction. Let's look at this one. 7 eighths times 2 35ths. Well, I can see right away that these can uh, cancel each other out because see how 7 can go into 35 and 2 can go into 8, so I can see these can cancel each other out and get smaller. So 1 7 goes into 35 five times, so that becomes a 1 and that becomes a 5. 1 2 can go into 8 four times. So now instead of 7 times 2 over 8 times 35, which would have been a really big fraction to reduce, we end up with 1 times 1 over 4 times 5. We end up with 1 20th. Can you imagine multiplying 8 times 35 and then having to reduce that fraction? Canceling out is so much easier. 9 tenths times 2 thirds, the 9 and the 3, see, they can work together, and the 2 and the 10 can work together. They have to be crossways. They can't be across, straight across, okay? It has to be numerator to denominator and numerator to denominator, okay? So there's 1 3 in, in a 9, there's 3 of them. There's 1 2, and there's 5 2's in the 10, so now we just have 3 fifths. We didn't have to do 9 times 2 is 18 over 30. We would have had 18 thirtieths if we did it the old way, and then we would have had to reduce and reduce to get to 3 fifths. This way we just cancel them out by using division and the greatest common factor, and we're simplified when we answer it. 4 sevenths times 5 twelfths. 4 can go into 12 3 times. These can't do anything. 5 and 7 can't do anything with each other. So we have 1 times 5 is 5, and 7 times 3 is 21. We have 5 21s. See? 5 21sts. If it says evaluate for y and y equals 5 6, we just plug the y in to the problem, to the equation. So now we have 5 6 times 3 tenths. We can cancel the 5 out with the 10. We get a 1 and a 2, and the 3 and the 6 can cancel out as a 1 and a 2. See, because there's two threes in here and there's one three here. Then we end up with one times one over two times two. We get one fourth. Very quick. Otherwise, we would have had 15 sixtieths. Do you see that? The five six times three tenths. We would have had 15 sixtieths and we would have had to cancel out and, or uh, simplify and simplify and divide to figure out that it was one fourth. See? So, I'm going to show you some more of this. This isn't the only video. I'm going to do a lot more of this with you. And this is how you cancel out to multiply fractions. And your book might refer to it as finding the greatest common factor to divide and solve. But when I was growing up and when I was in school, we just referred to it as canceling out. Okay? Because you are. You're crossing out the numbers. All right? I'll see you next video. Try this. It's actually kind of fun because it goes so fast. Bye.